Oh, uh, you're gonna see just the this the, the, the deceptive mind games that Anderson plays and pulls off trying to prove his heretical doctrine regarding dispensationalism and all this other stuff. It's ridiculous. I mean, if you're newly saved and you're listening to Stephen Anderson, I mean, you're gonna come off with some real heresy. I mean, he just does these very very tricky mind games to prove his heretical doctrine, and you're gonna see just, I mean, it just it hurts your brain. That that it just. It's, it's so hard to follow. He goes back and forth. He goes all over the place. I mean, it's obvious that he's not saved. There's no Holy Spirit that's leading him. But here's a video. He's uh, Replacement Theology versus Dispensationalism. And you're going to see how he just completely lies about what dispensationalists believe. And he just butchers the scriptures. Let's watch this. It says in verse number 10, For even that which was made glorious, talking about the Old Testament, had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory of that excelleth. So what he's saying is that the New Testament and its glory excels the Old Testament so much. It's, you wouldn't, if you put the two next to each other, the New Testament would be so much more glorious that you wouldn't even see the glory of the Old Testament. The brightness would excel it to that degree. It says in verse 11, For if that which is done away was glorious, how much more that which remaineth is glorious. Now, let me just stop right there and point out something very important doctrinally in this passage. The fact that the Old Testament is done away in Christ. The Old Covenant is done away in Christ. Nothing... Okay, uh, I want to point out the uh, Old Testament and Old Covenant. See, Testament and Covenant, they're not the same thing. Because what Anderson is doing, he's mixing up the Old Covenant with the Old Testament and saying, oh, look, they're the same thing. No, they're not. You know, showing his ignorance of Scripture, of course. It could be clearer in the New Testament, but that the New Testament replaces the Old Testament. And this is known as replacement theology. And a lot of people will attack this and say, oh, you believe in replacement theology? Yeah, I do believe in replacement theology. Now, there's a false doctrine out there called dispensationalism that teaches that the Old Testament and the New Testament are both in force side by side. Uh, total lie. Dispensationalists don't believe that. But you're going to see how he twists it to prove his, to prove his uh, heretical replacement theology. It's ridiculous. I mean, total lie right there. We don't believe that, oh, they're side by side. No, God made a covenant with Abraham that is everlasting. I'm going to show you some scripture on that, but verses that he won't show you, by the way. That they're both still in force, the old covenant and the new covenant. And some people will even take this to such an extreme, like, for example, John Hagee down in San Antonio, Texas, who takes this to such an extreme that says that the Jews don't even need to believe in Jesus to get to heaven because they can just find salvation through that old covenant, through that... A common tactic of these heretics like Anderson, though this will be mixed people like me who believe that there's a future plan for the Jews and with heretics like John Hagee who say that, oh, they don't need to believe in Jesus. See, they're, they're mixing us together and, and just... And he's deceiving his followers and making them think, making them think that everyone who believes the Jews, this plan for the Jews in the future, believe they don't believe that they basically are already saved. Uh, no, the Jews, if they, if a Jew dies, he will go to hell, um, absolutely. But there's still a plan for them in the future. God is not done with the Jews. Again, you can read Romans 11 on that. The very first verse of Romans, I mean, the whole chapter of Romans 11, debunks Anderson. But the very first verse of Romans 11 uh, says that God does, has not cast away his people. But see, he, he mixes us—he mixes us in with heretics like John Hagee, and deceiving his his, his uh, flock, you know, quote unquote flock, uh, his brainwashed cult, into thinking that oh, everyone who believes the Jews have a future plan, God has a future plan for them. Oh, they're like John Hagee, you know, classic tactic of these heretics. Just like with the the post trip thing, they'll say oh, John Nelson Darby, 1830, 1830. It's a brainwashing tactic, per, uh, perfected by cult leaders like this. That Old Testament. They already have their own testament. You know, the New Testament's for us, the Old Testament's for them. Wrong. The New Testament's for everybody, and the New Testament replaces the Old Testament. You say, I don't believe you, Pastor Harrison. Okay, well, look at your Bible here, what the Bible says three times in this one passage, let alone all the other places we could turn. What does verse 7 say? But if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones was glorious... So that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance. Watch this. Which glory was to be done away. Yeah. Pay attention to those words. Which glory was to be done away. Now look at verse 11. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. 
Look at verse number 13. And not as... Um, those passages aren't talking about, oh, the covenant with the Jews has gone away. I mean, really? You, I mean... I mean, it just again it's hard to follow him because he just goes all over the place he's just twisting scripture I mean it's ridiculous the, those verses aren't talking about God being done with the Jews I mean it's deception it's full on deception as Moses which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished yeah. now, this is a pretty clear chapter yes the Mosaic law is not for us today but where does it say the covenant is abolished? I mean, ridiculous. Let me show you some scripture that just debunks this this uh, heretic. Let me just do this. Uh, Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter seventeen, verse number seven. And I will establish my covenant between thee, or sorry, between me and thee, and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant. Hmm. Everlasting. So by Anderson's logic, I guess everlasting means it came to an end apparently everlasting covenant to be a god unto thee and to thy seed seed so it's not just i heard i watched this uh, marching to zion uh, film anderson said that, oh the promises were to abraham and christ uh no it was to abraham and his seed and to thy seed and thee or after thee uh verse eight and i will give unto thee and to thy seed and to thy seed after thee a land wherein thou art a stranger in all of the land of canaan for an everlasting possession and i will be their god everlasting possession interesting but not according to Anderson apparently the covenant has gone away according to Anderson you know ridiculous I mean what does everlasting mean it's an everlasting covenant but you're just gonna see in this clip I mean it, it just it hurts my brain I mean it just if you're if you have spiritual discernment you're gonna watch this thinking like what you know it, it's ridiculous I mean just the I believe it's, it's more than just he's deceived. I think there's actually devils that are, are making him, you know, that are putting these things in his mind. Because just the scripture twisting that he does, I mean, it's not it's not just he's deceived. There's actually devil spirits that are making him be this deceptive. Okay? I mean, he just, the arguments he makes against dispensationalism are ridiculous. Chapter 4, verse 5, the Bible reads, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him, that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. And what I want to point out here is that the Bible is talking about a guy who worketh not. This guy is not doing works, but he does believe on him that justifieth the ungodly. The Bible says his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. And this goes... Um, that was, okay, the thing about David is that he was a type of a Christian for today. But does that, it's not saying that David was saved the same way we are today. Here's how he's twisting the passage. He's saying that, oh, David said this, so therefore he was justified the same way. Uh, no, he wasn't, because here's a scripture that debunks that. Uh, where is it? Psalms 51.11. Because Anderson will say that David was saved by faith alone and he had eternal security. Really? Let's see about that. Psalm, Psalm 51 11. This is David speaking. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from thee or from me. Hmm. So David was saved by faith alone. He's asking God not to take the Holy Spirit from him. Uh, compare that with Ephesians 1 13. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Um, so David was saved by faith alone. I don't think so. It's two different dispensations there. In the Old Testament, you could lose your salvation. You could have the Holy Spirit taken from you. Um, let me just look at my notes on the side here. I think it's in, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, second, or 1 Samuel 18. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 10 to 12. Uh, and that verse says, and it came to pass on the morrow that an evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house, and David played with his hand, and as at other times there was a javelin in Saul's hand. Uh, verse 11, And Saul cast a javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. So look at verse 12. You want to say they're saved by, you, you want to say the oh, eternal security in the Old Testament. Look at verse 12. Uh, verse 12. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with them and was departed from Saul. So, so God departed from Saul? 
Again, how does that line up with Ephesians 1.13, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. But in this verse, um, God departed from Saul. So they say by faith alone? I don't think so. Ridiculous. I mean, the scripture twisting he has to do to prove his doctrine. But what do you expect? Let's continue. To show that salvation has always been by faith because it brings up Abraham and it brings up David and it brings up us today as all being saved by faith Amen. without works. So anyone who teaches that salvation used to be by works or something, you know, is blatantly disregarding what this scripture says. And the thing that's so dumb about teaching that people could have been saved by works in the Old Testament is that, well, if that worked for them then, why doesn't it work now? Uh, because Jesus didn't die in the Old Testament. Okay, if salvation was by faith alone in the Old Testament, what was the point of Jesus dying on the cross? And also, um, what was the point of animal sacrifices? Let me show you that. Leviticus chapter 17, because the animal sacrifices were an atonement for your sins. They weren't just symbolic or something like that. They were actually an atonement for your sins. Leviticus 17, verse 10 to 12. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and I will cut him off from among his people. Huh? So God is setting his face against the soul, so it's not just physical salvation. Interesting. Verse eleven. For the life is in the flesh is in or life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Anderson will say, well, talking about the blood of Jesus, uh, it's not mentioned anywhere in the verse. Okay? If you understand the Old Testament, the animal sacrifices were an atonement for your souls. It, it wasn't just symbolic. So, if salvation was by grace through faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, um, what was the point of an animal sacrifice to atone for your souls? You know? Then, of course, he brings up Abraham. He says, oh, Abraham is saved by faith alone. Um, where does it say faith alone? He believed God, but what did he believe? He believed that God was going to provide him a sacrifice. Okay, let me show you that. Uh, J James chapter 2, verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Hmm. So he was justified by works. So Abraham had faith. Obviously, he had faith because he believed God was going to provide him a sacrifice. But was it by f grace through faith alone? No, he had to offer his son upon, upon the altar. He was justified by works. You know, there's, there's other verses I can go to as well. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that this, this her heretical non-dispensationalism by Anderson, uh, I mean, come on, he's saying, oh, if they're saved by works in the Old Testament, why did, what was the point of, you know, wh why aren't we saved by works today? Because Jesus didn't die on the cross back in the Old Testament, okay? You know, it's funny, in, in this dispensation of heresy film they put out, they said, oh, the Old Testament prophets preached Jesus Christ. Um, no, they didn't, okay? It's funny, they don't, get, they don't give a single verse for that. They just say, oh, they, they preached Jesus. Okay, where's the verse? They don't give any. But uh, it's ridiculous. Don't be deceived by non-dispensationalism, and don't be deceived by replacement theology. Uh, one last kick at replacement theology. Uh, here's, a, here's a book, a chapter that Rome, uh, not Rome, Anderson can't handle. It's in Romans 11. Uh, Romans 11, 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I am also an Israelite and of the seed of Abraham and of the tribe of Benjamin. Hmm. God doesn't cast away his people. Okay? And no, salvation has not always been by faith. So, don't be deceived by Anderson. God bless you. Goodbye.